Hello folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple navbar using Flexbox. Now this navbar is going to be responsive, so you can see that as it gets smaller it actually switches to a column display that's going to be more useful on smaller screens. So let's get straight into it. I've got my index and my style sheet set up here. So first of all I'll just go HTML and hit tab and because I'm using Sublime Text as my editor it just pre-populates or auto-completes this structure for me. So I'm going to name this document navbar, save that and if I just go to my working document and refresh it, there we go, it's coming up at the top there. So I'm going to set up the document structure here. Now within the body, I'm first of all going to put the navbar into a nav tag and then within here the navbar is actually just an unordered list. So when you look at these items they look like individual blocks here but really it's just an unordered list that has been arranged to go in a row rather than in a column. I'm going to say ul for unordered list and then within here I'm going to have my list elements with li. So each one of them is going to contain a link. And each of those links is going to just for the time being anyway have no address so I'm just going to say equal oops got that wrong way around equal to the pound sign and the first one's going to be called home. And then I can just copy this down add my other links so got home the second one is going to be projects Okay, that one's fine. Then I've got about, uh, I'll copy them first. So then I've got about and I've got contact. There we go. So we save that and you can see I've got all these links coming up. They're kind of just the default color for HTML links. And then lastly, I had this little logo that's separate from everything and it's on the right hand side. So that's going to be outside of my unordered list, but it's going to be inside the nav bar. So I just put it down here with a H1 tag and I'm just going to make up this company called RS Design. Okay, there we go. So that's actually all of the HTML that I need to do. Now I can start styling it. Now before I use my style sheet, I need to make sure that I call it through into my HTML document. So within the head, just up here, I'm going to type link, hit tab. So rel equals style sheet, and then the file name is just style.css. Okay, now in my case, if I just show you the folder structure, my all of my files are just all in the same folder. So I can just call out their names here. I don't have to put the folder locations, they're just next to each other. So get rid of that and that's it. HTML document is done. So let's go into the CSS. Now first of all I just like setting some default values here. So we'll go uh, I'll go margin is zero, padding is zero and box sizing is border box. Save that and you know straight away everything bumps up against each other into the top left corner. So my padding and margin are gone and that's why it's all looking like that. Next I want to style the body of the document. So I like to work my way down in the same structure as I have my HTML. So I kind of, as I style them, I just work through the tags and the classes. Now for the body, first of all, let's give it a height of 100 VH. So it takes up the entire viewport height. And then I want to load in that background image. So the background image is going to be URL and then the name of the file. So in my case, the name of the file is just bg.jpg. So let's hide that again and we'll just put in here bg.jpg. So as I save that, straight away it pulls that through. It's completely the wrong size, way too big for everything. So let's first of all say background position and we set that to center. Okay, that's a little bit better, uh, but now the background size is what I need to adjust. So background size is going to be set to cover. There we go. So now it shrinks down to the size that it needs to be. Okay, so that's fine. Now let's just mess around with the font a little bit. We'll go font family is Helvetica sans serif. That looks a bit better. Now let's increase the size of it across the entire document. So 1.2 rem. That will grow everything. Then let's go text align center. Okay, so that now for the time being, of course, that's not what we want, but it just means that as the layout goes vertical, the text is already aligned for that. And let's just change the letter spacing a little bit. So we'll go letter spacing of 0.15 rem, and I'll actually just move all of the letters away from each other a little bit. But lastly, I want to change the color. So I kind of wanted to go with a white color here instead. So I'll go color. Now instead of just typing it out in here, I'm going to define a variable so I can use it in a couple of different places. So I'll come up here, I'll say root, and the variable is going to be called text, and that variable is going to contain the color of FFF, which is white. So now in here, I can just call that variable by saying var and given the variable name. 
and there we go now it's gone to white now the links have been changed because i have to style them separately but i'm going to be able to use this variable again so if i ever need to change the color of my text this is what i change rather than having to go hunt for it in each of the elements okay so that's the body style now the next tag is the nav bar first of all let's give it a background color just so there's a little bit of contrast here now the background color is going to be this kind of brownie color that i've picked so it's ad 4 a 3 2 okay let's go that's a bit better and everything is kind of bunched up against each other so let's put in a little bit of padding inside that nav bar so you can see it moves everything in the way and those little elements uh, those list item buttons have just reappeared now those bullet points now the problem here is that everything is still being stacked up in a column so it's just sort of following the structure of the html document what i want to do is turn my navbar into a flexbox container so i set my display to flex and automatically it can it changes to row set out so now i've got my unordered list and next to it i've got this logo but i don't want them to be next to each other i actually want the list here and the logo on the right hand side i need to put in some space in between them well I just say justify content space between. So now it takes all of the available space, puts it in the middle of them and moves the elements to the left and to the right. So that is fine. But you notice that this RS design is actually kind of not in, in the center horizontally. It's just sitting a little bit high. So what we'll do here is go align items, change that to center and that moves down. Okay, so that's the nav bar done. Now I just need to work on that unordered list. So again, it's just displayed as a column. Well, if I just change the display of it to flex, it's by default going to move them into a row arrangement. So already it's kind of looking like a nav bar. Uh, what I want to do though is get rid of those bullet points. So let's say list style is none. So they're gone. And I need to put a little gap between them. So we'll go gap of one rem. And they're spaced apart now. So that's almost everything done now. It's kind of taken shape, but I just need to do a little bit of styling on the links themselves. So we'll get rid of that underline, first of all. We'll text decoration none. Okay, so that's better. And then I'll change the text color. So again, rather than having to type out the text color, I can just access that variable. Say var the text, and it changes to white. So if I wanted to change the color to black, I just need to change one variable up here, rather than going through and looking for them individually. Okay, so that's a nav bar actually nearly done. The only thing I want to add before I move on to the responsiveness is a hover effect on the links. So we'll say a hover text decoration underline. So I actually want to add the underline back in when I hover over them. So it just looks a little bit better this way. And now I can start adding the media queries. If I shrink this, you'll notice that it is responsive to an extent because I've got Flexbox here, but as it gets too small, that's not really looking very good. So to add some media queries, we'll just add a little section here, say at media, and I want this media query to kick in at a certain width. So we'll say the max width of 680 pixels. So when the screen gets smaller than that, I want to change a couple of things. Well, first of all, the nav bar needs to go from being horizontally displayed to vertically displayed. So let's target the nav, uh, nav bar here. But what do I do here? Well, if we go back up here, at the moment I've got display flex and by default the flex direction is row so that's why everything is in line what I can do here is overwrite that by saying flex direction becomes column so whenever the screen size gets to that size instead of being displayed as a row it pops down into a column so you'll notice that's not actually giving me the effect that I need but that's because then the nav bar contains the links and then it contains the logo. So it's taking the logo and the links away from each other and display them as a column separately. I still need to display the links themselves as a column. So I need to target the UL and essentially do the exact same thing. Flex direction becomes column as well. And we save that and there you can see the links are being displayed on top of each other with the logo underneath. Now everything is still kind of close to each other though. I wanna add in some kind of gap here. So if we go back to my nav and we say gap of three PX no, not PX, uh, rem. And it's just going to create a gap between the elements. So these are my ULs, uh, or my UL, and this is my H1. So those are the two elements that are within the nav bar. That's why it's created this gap between them here. Now, one other little thing I want to change is that when I have it displayed this way, the RS design or the logo is on the right-hand side. 
But when I shrink this, it kind of stays there. So it stays after the UL. I want it to go on top. So I'm just going to change the order of the display to you. I'm going to take my unordered list and I'm going to give it an order of one, which means that it's going to come after the logo. Additionally, I want to make the font size a bit bigger. So let's say the font size becomes 1.5 rem. Okay, and then let's just space the links out a little bit. So put a gap of 1.5 rem. And there you go. So now as I shrink it and I grow it, you can see that I've got this responsive design, got a nav bar laid out nicely. And as it gets smaller, it switches into this column state instead. So I hope you found that useful and thanks for watching.